The anticipation around the new NVIDIA GeForce 30 series graphics cards over the last few weeks has been astounding. NVIDIA claimed in their live stream double the performance gen on gen and more features than you can shake a stick at. So the new cards have a lot to live up to. And in this video, we'll take a closer look at the first new 30 series cards, the RTX 3080, learn what makes it tick and most importantly benchmark to see if the performance claim was justified. Keep watching to find out if this really is the most important graphics card launch of the last few years or a load of hyperinflation. Here's what you need to know. The RTX 3080 is the first in the new series of graphics cards and is based on the Ampere architecture. This debuted a few months ago in the astonishingly powerful supercomputer, the DGX A100, which scans cells to organizations such as universities performing AI research and James Bond supervillains. This table shows the specs of the RTX 3080, the 3090 and the 3070 models up against the three top tier graphics cards from the previous generation RTX 20 series. There are four big takeaways from this spec table. Firstly, a huge increase in CUDA cores, the workhorse of NVIDIA GPUs, with the new 30 series cards having more than double the 20 series cards. Secondly, the new 30 series cards use a new type of memory, GDDR6X, which gives a huge 53% increase in memory bandwidth. Thirdly, the new 30 series have more RT cores, but fewer tensor cores than the 20 series. We'll delve more into that in the architecture section of this video. And finally, the new 30 series cards are compatible with PCIe 4.0. That means they'll still work in a PCI 3.0 motherboard, but they can take advantage of the higher bandwidth of PCIe 4.0. We'll also investigate that later on in this video too. As already touched upon, the new RTX 3080 and other models in the GeForce 30 series are based on a new architecture codenamed Ampere. GPU architecture is an incredibly complex topic, but we'll try and decode the most important concepts and numbers for you. The most important thing to know about Ampere is that like Turing, it's made up of multiple streaming multiprocessors, SMs for short, each comprising of three main types of core. CUDA cores for everyday math, such as traditional rasterized graphics, RT cores for ray tracing, and tensor cores for AI workloads. Ampere takes these all up a notch, with the CUDA cores now capable of performing two shader calculations per clock versus one on Turing, giving a huge increase in brute force power. Meanwhile, the second gen RT cores also have their throughput of ray triangle intersections double two, which is critical for improving the sluggish performance of Turing when ray tracing. And finally, the third gen tensor cores get even more of a performance boost, which is important to improve the performance of DLSS, NVIDIA's AI enhanced super resolution rendering technique. Ampere also supports a new type of memory, GDDR6X. Unlike traditional DDR memory types, which have two voltage states, which is where the name DDR, double data rate, comes in, GDDR6X has four voltage steps. Each of these 250 millivolt steps can be used to transmit a bit, effectively doubling the transfer rate compared to GDDR6. The result of all these changes is an incredibly complex architecture, with Ampere GPUs having over 28 billion transistors. The diagrams on screen compares the architecture of the previous gen RTX 2080 Super on the left versus the full GA102 on the right on which the RTX 3080 is based. In numbers, here's what the transition from the 2080 Super to the RTX 3080 provides. The new GeForce 30 series graphics cards and their underlying Ampere architecture aren't all about brute performance though. They also introduce four major new features and benefits for gamers. We've already released dedicated videos on each of these four topics, so if you want to learn more about them, check out the links in the description below. Before we dive into the results, we wanted to give a big shout out to Asus. While Scan sells a wide variety of RTX 3080s from different manufacturers, Asus pulled out all the stops to get us cars before anybody else, which really helped us to get this video out for launch day. The particular card that we tested was an Asus RTX 3080 Tough Gaming, which has a triple slot heatsink with three fans and an embedded Tough logo illuminated by an RGB lighting system. 
Like the RTX 3080 Founders Edition, this Asus card also exhausts some hot air through a hole in the PCB up towards the roof of most cases, rather than recycling air near the graphics card like most coolers do. We put the Asus GeForce RTX 3080 card through its paces up against the three fastest previous generation GeForce RTX 20 series cards, the Titan RTX, 2080 Ti and 2080 Super. As these are all high-end graphics cards, all the benchmarks will run at the highest quality settings with all the eye candy dialed up to the max at two resolutions, 2560 by 1440 and 3840 by 2160. All the cards were tested with the special 456.16 NVIDIA press driver using a fresh install of Windows 10 Home. As the RTX 3080 supports the new PCIe 4.0 interface, we wanted to see if there was any impact of using a PCIe 4.0 motherboard over 3.0, as it has double the bandwidth. This could have an even bigger impact on what sort of system is best for an RTX 3080. This is because right now only AMD makes PCIe 4.0 motherboards and CPUs. For this reason, we started off testing the new RTX 3080 on three different platforms. One AMD with PCIe 4.0, another AMD with PCIe 3.0, and finally an Intel with PCIe 3.0. You can see the key specs of each of these test systems on screen now. So how much difference does PCIe 4.0 versus 3.0 really make to the RTX 3080? Well, the short answer in today's games is that it makes no appreciable difference. For instance, in both Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Metro, we measured less than one frame per second difference between the two AMD platforms. This is potentially good news for Intel as its CPUs are still limited to PCIe 3.0 and are slightly faster than AMD's when it comes to gaming. That said, AMD's fourth generation Zen CPUs are due to launch later this year and may prove to be superior. We'll just have to wait. It's also worth pointing out that whilst PCIe 4.0 does not boost performance now, as games grow larger and more demanding, this may well change. So PCIe 3.0 may limit performance in the future. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was one of the first games to add support for DXR and DLSS, so we were keen to see how the new RTX 3080 performed in this title. In traditional rasterized mode with a bucket load of anti-aliasing, we saw a speed up of 52% from the RTX 2080 Super to the RTX 3080. And with DXR enabled, a 44% increase, two very worthy speed ups. Clearly, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is no challenge for the RTX 3080 at 1440p. We then upped the work for the graphics card by increasing the resolution to 4K. And once again, the RTX 3080 proved supreme, delivering faster frame rates than even the Titan RTX and the RTX 2080 Ti. So much so that the RTX 3080 was able to deliver a smooth frame rate of 69 frames per second, even with DXR on, an unthinkable achievement for a sub £1,000 graphics card a generation ago. Metro Exodus remains one of the most challenging games to run at a smooth frame rate, even at 1440p. With the game running with DXR ray tracing enabled, the RTX 2080 Super struggled with a frame rate of just 39 frames per second. Meanwhile, the RTX 3080 glided along smoothly at 67 frames per second, a massive 72% increase gen on gen. This puts the RTX 3080 with DXR on ahead of the far more expensive Titan RTX and RTX 2080 Ti, even with DXR disabled on the latter. The RTX 3080 made such good work in Metro at 1440p that we tested it at the more demanding 4K resolution. Just as before, the results were impressive to say the least, with the smooth frame rate of 49 frames per second, an amazing 75% faster than the RTX 2080 Super. Considering that the only previous generation cards capable of gaming smoothly at 4K were £1,000 and above, the RTX 3080 is a huge leap forward, especially when you consider you can play Metro smoothly at 4K with DXR on. We also ran 3D Mark Times by Benchmark on all of the cards. Despite being a synthetic benchmark rather than a real game, Time Spy is popular with gamers as it's so easy to run, so it's definitely worth including here. The results are output as a score with a higher number indicating faster performance. 
Once again, the RTX 3080 proved massively faster than the RTX 2080, notching up a 42% higher score. This is a massive boost gen on gen and echoes the fantastic speed ups we saw in the real games that we benchmarked. And just like in the games, the RTX 3080 also proved far faster than the considerably more expensive RTX 2080 Ti and Titan RTX cards. The new RTX 3080 has a TDP of 320 watts compared to the 250 watts of the RTX 2080 Super. So it should come as no surprise that its real world power draw is higher too. However, our test system drew a peak of 460 watts from the wall. So contrary to pre-release rumors, you won't need a monstrous PSU to power the RTX 3080. While the RTX 20 series graphics cards were revolutionary for introducing hardware accelerated ray tracing via DXR and AI enhanced super resolution via DLSS, the underlying Turing based GPUs weren't quite powerful enough to deliver on the promise. What's more, they weren't significantly faster than GTX 10 series card in rasterized games. The new RTX 3080 and the underlying Ampere architecture that it's based on changes all of that. Via a combination of a massive increase in brute force processing, a huge boost in memory bandwidth and architectural improvements, the RTX 3080 demolishes the RTX 20 series, even the far more expensive flagship models. For instance, in non-DXR enhanced traditional rasterized graphics, we saw anywhere up to a 50% speed up compared to the previous gen RTX 2080 Super, a far cry from the 15% speed up from GTX 10 series to RTX 20 series. Where the RTX 3080 really shines though is with DXR race tracing. And whilst this looks absolutely gorgeous on an RTX 20 series GPU, it also ran like a slideshow unless you dropped the resolution right down. This is no longer the case with the RTX 3080, with silky smooth frame rates possible with all the eye candy, including DXR and DLSS enabled. For instance, we recorded silky smooth frame rates at 1440p and even 4K with the RTX 3080, with an astounding 70% speed up compared to the RTX 2080 Super. With the RTX 3080, you can really get the best of both worlds, eye candy and smooth frame rates. DLSS really seems to come of age now. Early implementations produce noticeably inferior image quality to traditional rendering. But the latest version is practically indistinguishable from traditional post-processing techniques, whilst helping to provide a significant performance boost too. What's more, the RTX 3080 is priced more or less the same as its direct predecessor, the RTX 2080 Super. While we can understand that some gamers will be upset by the new RTX 3080 undercutting and outperforming flagship RTX 20 series graphics cards, for owners of other GPUs, particularly GTX 10 series cards, the RTX 3080 is a fantastic upgrade and really great value for money. Scan sells a huge variety of NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 graphics cards from a wide variety of manufacturers, including the Asus Tough card that we used in this video for testing. Alternatively, if your PC is getting a bit long in the tooth, then why not treat yourself to an RTX 3080 powered gaming PC from 3XS Systems? Just follow the links in the description to find out more.